By the end of this lecture, you're going to know how to set up the Angular testbed in order to work with forms. You're going to know how to test a form for validity. And you're also going to know how to test a form submission. Now, to test forms, we'll extend the login component we've been working with so far in this section. However, we'll convert the simple email and password field form into a model driven form. And we're also dropping the input enabled property. So the first key difference is we can see we're using the ng submit directive. So when the user submits the form, we call the login function. And we're also using the form group directive to associate this template form element with the model form on our component. And then we use the form control name directive to map um, template form controls to form controls on our form model. And then you can see we're initializing our form model on the ng init lifecycle hook here. And we're using something called a form builder, which I actually typically don't recommend that we use because we then don't get references to our individual form controls. We don't easily get references to our individual form controls. But essentially, it's a way of defining an entire form with all of its nested form controls just by providing in an object with all of the configuration parameters for all of those nested groups and controls. I, if, you, if you need to use it, it's just a really, really quick and easy way to define a form model. But again, I don't recommend that you actually use this one because, well, it's much more useful to have references to individual form controls in order to render a form with some nice user interface features. And then the rest of it should be pretty simple or similar at least. So we've got the login function, which if the form is valid, then we emit a new user object on the output logged in event. And then specifically, we have our form model stored on a property called form. And this is the thing that we're linking to our template form using the form group there. Now going to have a look at our test specs, our stub test specs. It looks mostly the same as our other stub test specs, but just with a few key differences. The most important one being that we add to our testing module, the imports for the reactive forms module and forms module as well. So we can use forms in our tests. And we're manually triggering the components ng on init lifecycle function. Angular won't actually call this for us. Now let's look at how we can test our forms validity. Now the first test spec we may want to write is one that checks that a blank form is invalid. And since we are using a model driven form, we can just check the valid property on the form model itself. So let me just add one test spec here. Now to get a reference to the form model itself, we just go through the components, a so component dot form, and then we check the valid property and we expect that to be false. We expect the empty form to be invalid. Good, our tests pass if form is invalid when empty. Just as a quick aside, this is one of the reasons model driven forms are easier to test than template driven forms. I mean, we already have an object on the component which we can inspect from our test spec for correctness. We can already inspect the form model itself. Now with template driven forms, the state of the form is in the view. And unless the component has a reference to the template form with perhaps a view child decorator, there is no way to test the form using a unit test. Typically with template driven forms, we would have to perform a full end to end test, simulating button clicks and typing values into forms. Something that's possible, but just a lot more complicated. Now going back to our test specs, we can also check to see if individual fields are valid. For example, the email field should initially be invalid. So if I create a test spec for our email field, like so. So we can grab a reference to the actual emailed field itself from the form 
dot controls property like so so component dot forms dot control control sorry and then we're grabbing the email and this is going to return the email form control from our model form and store it in the email variable there and then just like the form we can check if the field is valid through the email dot valid property so again by default I actually expect the email field to be invalid to begin with. So now if we run this test, yep, that's passing. But as well as checking to see if the field is valid or not, we can also see what specific validators are failing through the email.errors property. And since by going back to our login component, if we check the validators that we added to the email, Field. We added the required and the pattern validator to the email field, and we added the required and the min length validator to the password field. And because we added the required validator, and by default the email field hasn't been set, I would expect the required validator to be failing. So we can test for that by let me just create let me create an errors object. And then I want to update this errors object. So if the email field has errors, it's going to, we're going to use that. If it doesn't have errors, then we're just going to return the empty object. And then we can add an expectation for this errors object. So we expect this errors object to contain a key for required. If it contains a key for required, it means the required validator is failing because we haven't entered any value into the email field. So now if we run that, again, that's passing. So previously, I showed you how we can set data on our input controls by going through the native element and the value property. Now, you could do that, but it's not really recommended. A much better method is to actually set the value by going through the debug element and calling the set value function. So I can do email set value I'm going to set it just to the, just to the string test now let's grab a reference to the email errors and for some reason this has gone missing let me add those back in and now well now I'm expecting the required validator to pass but now I'm expecting the pattern validator to fail because an email should at least have the at character for the pattern validator to pass. So now if I run this, yep, it's still all passing. Now we can submit a form by clicking on the submit button, but we've already covered how to actually click on a submit button to submit a form in a previous lecture. And since the ng submit directive has its own set of tests, it's pretty safe to assume that the ng submit expression in the template works as expected. So to test form submission with model driven forms, we can just call the login function on our controller. So let me add a test spec for submitting a form here. Now, initially, I expect the form to be invalid. I'm then going to set some values onto our email and password fields. And then I do expect our form to be valid at this point. I create a local user object. I then subscribe to our logged in output event property and I store the emitted user to our local user variable. I'm then going to trigger a, a login function being called from our component. And then again, I can check to make sure that the emitted user object is correct. So now if I rerun this application, you can see it's still passing. And that's the general idea for testing model driven forms. If you check the plunker, associated with this lecture, you're going to find a much more fleshed out version of the email field validity test spec, and you're going to find a password field 
validity test spec as well. So to summarize, we can easily unit test model driven forms in Angular just by testing the form model itself. To test template driven forms in Angular, we need to launch a full end to end testing environment and then interact with the browser to test the form. Next up, we're going to take a look at how to test an application that makes HTTP requests.